Before Mr. Floyd was murdered, the new normal is not going to be what we experienced in the past. It's incumbent upon me, it's incumbent upon all of us to continue to move forward. As I've said before, that too often we've seen a shooting of a black man and we have protests and we turn the page. Sometimes when we turn the page is because we can't get the proper federal attention or attention to it. It's incumbent upon me as mayor and the rest of us not to let that happen. This is different because the activism in this moment and the conversations I've had with young people in my administration, the emotions that they have, they're ready for change and they're ready to do the work they have to do. And I think this is a, a unique moment in time that we can look back on, some uh, generations after us can look back on and say they're grateful for the, 20, second, the, the second quarter of the 21st century, 2020, really began change in our country. The question, the question is, um, what do I say to the police that we're moving this money from the overtime budget um, and it's not fair to them? Uh, the answer is the money that we're going to be investing is actually benefiting them uh, to deal with racism, uh, to deal with health inequities, uh, to deal with opportunities for our youth, to deal with homelessness. Uh, I think that when we think about policing, as, as when we the conversation has been around um, defunding police departments and, 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 and changing the way police departments are. What we have to do is continue. This is, this is as I mentioned earlier, this is the, these two steps are the first two steps I'm taking today in declaring a racism, a public health crisis, and also working to do reforms in the police department, there are other steps that we have to take in housing, in education, in economic development. All of those, it's, it's all of it together.